Okay, folks, welcome back to Inside the Kennel podcast. I love this podcast. This is our preview. Maddie, correct me if I'm wrong, after round nine. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely right. So we're, we're really fortunate to have Dougie Hawkins on board to have a bit of a reflection, I guess, of what has happened in the last four weeks of the season. Well, Dougie said, I believe, a month ago that he said, you know what, we're going to win the next four games. And Dougie, they said you were nuts. Exactly, Matty and Paul. And you know what? I was on the money because we've won six of our last seven. Is that fair to say? We lost the first two. First two, now we've won six out of seven. And I'm sure you will agree with me, and, and obviously our Bulldog people would agree with me here. Yeah? We're, we're not playing great. You know what? We're still winning. You wait until we start hitting our straps and start playing our best football. It's going to be a... Phew, the dogs And the dogs have a real great hope I believe, to finish top four. How's that? A great hope. Okay, I think as things are unfolding and you look at the eight, it seems like there's a bit of a division between the haves and have-nots and as far as the top eight goes, Matty. And and now that you look at it, I agree, Matty. Uh, Dougie, I didn't feel like this two or three weeks ago, but you look at who the top four are. I think we're a game out, Matty, aren't we? I, I think I agree. And I think potentially we've got – I think we're growing. I feel there's a – you know, um, there, there's some growth left in the team, a lot of growth, in fact. I agree with you, Paul. I, I totally agree with you. And, and you're right, Matty. It was only a few weeks ago that I did say that we can win our next four games, and um, and we've certainly done that. We might have lost one in, in that patch, did we, in that four? Yeah, we, we lost the one game just in Port Adelaide, and um, I think against the power. Oh, in the rain, yeah. Yep, yep. We're leading with about six or seven minutes to go, and Cody Waitman had snagged four, and they just probably took their opportunities when we didn't. We could have closed that one out, and if we had have closed it out, we would have, we'd have seven on the trot. Yeah, so it's been been a really good you know patch over the last four or five weeks, and and again against Carlton, there could have been easily we could have easily rolled over and got skittled, could have easily got skittled against Carlton, and, and these boys bounced back and stood up and uh, and got the job done. And again, you know, Botton Pelly's been sensational, and he over that over this period again, he's just been terrific. His leadership's been outstanding. Um, uh, the son of uh, Tony Libertore. He hates me saying this, Thomas. <laughs> uh, he, he's it. Uh, trust me, I love the Bont. Bont's our man. But this bloke is right in the mix of, you know, when he's going, guess what? The dogs go. Well, Dougie, best on ground on the weekend, wasn't he? Best on ground. Yeah, 100%, Paul and uh, Matty. And I, I think the other bloke who I think had a real consistent year is the big fella, Tim English. I, I just think he's been really good. And that's particularly on ball. Uh, and, and the good thing too, probably, so I've been pretty tough on Lob. I've been pretty tough on Lob. He's kicked his one or two goals here and there, but he probably hasn't been as competitive as I'd like to see him be. But what he has allowed now, boys, is that he can go into the ruck. And he's been doing a bit of that. English can come down to the forward line. He doesn't need to have that break on the on the bench. Uh, and again, I'll say it again, uh, that's been really good for the club to have Lob rucking and he go forward and, and I reckon English has been an outstanding touch. He, he He's probably the best big man in the competition, I think, at this stage. And uh, and you want to talk about Brownlow medals, we know we all love to see the Bont do very, very well. This bloke's going to pinch a lot of votes off him, Tim English. Trust me. It's been well, outstanding. It's, it, it, it's con, a general con, public consensus, uh, Dougie, that, that English is having an absolute blinding year. And I agree with his consistency. Having saw him play on Saturday night, He's he's playing with more courage. He's putting him. He's sticking the marks where he used to drop them. He's he's just stepping up. He's playing some extremely consistent football. Matty, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think Dougie sort of mentioned Lob, and um, you know, there was a there, there, there was a lot of um, division, I guess, with the with the supporter base. You know, how effective is Lob going to be? Well, you know what? He only has to get the ball a couple of times a game within sixty meters, and he he's just a radar. He kicked those goals, but. But as that aside, as Dougie says, you know, he can just provide so much opportunity for um, English to thrive. And, you know, I don't think there's any coincidence that um, that we're seeing his best season um, with with having a genuine uh, person who can give him a chop out um, in the ruck. And I've just loved Timmy's work this year. And, um, Doug, I wanted to just um, talk about someone else as well, another player who, you know, we, we thought may have been on the crossroads at the end of last year. 
you know, we'd, we'd moved him onto the forward line, maybe because there was a, you know, a need. We didn't have some of the small forwards that we have now in Waitman and, and Artie Jones. But um, so, so you know, our reigning Norm Smith medalist went to the forward line, Jason Johannesson, and spent a couple of years there. And it was, you know, it was a challenge for him. He would admit that. And he, he had to grind his way and, and do a team role. Now he's returned to his natural habitat. How have you seen um, his rebirth on the back line? Yeah, Matty, I, I think, I think he's a, uh... I think he's proved me wrong. I'll be honest, Paul. I thought he was at the end of his... I thought he was coming towards the end. How's mm. that? And I, and I felt that he, he may have been the end if he stayed half forward. I just think he didn't understand it and didn't know how to play it. I got a feeling it might have been his wife or his partner said he didn't win a North Miss middle on a half forward flank. Is that what yeah. you said? <laughs> yeah, she said it post-match a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? He didn't. He, did. he actually didn't. So she's actually nailed that. So I think it's a bit of a bit of a cheeky shot. But anyway, that's all right. We love people with a little bit of bit of grunt. <laughs> and, and you're right, Matty Poor. He's gone back, and he seems to be playing more um, as a non a man on man. Does that sound right? He's playing a bit more tag and that mm. small, sharp, sneaky forward player. Is that fair call? Yeah. Well, he did play on Cameron, didn't he, Matty? He did, yeah, he did. And, you know, he can shut those players down. But then his offensive side, when we've got the ball off, he goes. and he Takes can, off. Uh, he can cut them through. And he's actually been playing a lot through the corridor. He's, he's, um, his disposal's been incredible. If you watched him against Carlton, he's, um, his metres gained was more than anyone. He had, I think he had 23 kicks. And most of those were just lateral, straight down the middle. And, um, wow, when you've, got, when you've got a player like him burning it up, he's the second fastest player at the club behind Leith Vandermeer, you know, look out. And then... You know what? You've got your entourage of other players around him. I know in 2016 we had you know Bob Murphy and and Matty Boyd um, and JJ, but now we've got um, JJ back in that position plus Ed Richards, and you've got Caleb Daniel and and obviously Bailey Dale. Is that maybe the best quartet of halfback running backs in the league at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we'll be far off, Matty. Paul, we'll be far off, and um, so no, no, out. we've been been very good, uh, Jay Henson. He's it, proved me wrong, Paul. I thought he's right at the crossroads of his career, Matty. I thought he may have been just about done. How's that? I think wow. you and the rest of the supporters there, Doug, he's, he's been yep. but just amazing to see a guy rejuvenate himself with such confidence. And he's almost playing to his utter full potential, isn't he? And he's almost doing a Bailey Dale and he's kicking goals. He's he's streaming down the middle and he's and he's it's not by accident. He's he's got full intention of putting the goals through the sticks, uh, the ball through the sticks, isn't he? How old is he now, Paul? He's got to be a Paul. How old would he be? be 31, 30. I think, Matty. Is he 31? Is he 30-something, Matty, Paul? Yeah, I'd guess at 30, but, um, yeah, you might be right there. So, you know, he, he, he's no spring chicken, but, you know, he wrote it. There was an article in the Herald Sun, and he said it was like back to the future. So he's, you know, he's kind of gone back in time. Um, you know, he seemed like a young player just full of sprite the other night. And um, if he can continue that, gee, we've got some weaponry. You're right. You know the bloke I, I really feel for at the moment is not getting a game. I, I know I'd love to see Riley West play, but the boy McLean, <laughs> Christ. Tate McLean just can't break him his way into that side, can he? Yeah, that's right. He's, he's a classy player. Um, you know, I think he racked up maybe 45 or 47 possessions a few weeks back. He did crack into the side, but probably didn't grasp his opportunity. So, you know, I think he's probably working on a few things. Hopefully we get it right because, gee, he's a dangerous player when he's up and going. The kid's had two knee reconstructions. His courage to come back from that for one has been outstanding. And I just think he's an outstanding young man and a quality person. And, gee, I'd love to see him get back in that side and, and play very well, young Toby McLean. I'll tell you another bloke, Dougie and Matty, that's playing really good footy in the reserves is Baku Kamas. He is... And look, Dougie, I wanted to get your thoughts around the young James O'Donnell who had a, um, you know, a very exciting, um, you know, introduction to AFL football in his first game. I actually sat in front of his old man, Simon, and had a chat with Simon. He was an old assumption boy and Simon was really excited. What, Baker Kamas, what, what's he got to do to break into the team? And why, what do you think he was, he was, uh, James O'Donnell was selected over him? Uh, on the weekend. Yeah, it's a f funny. Uh, uh, I saw him against uh, Werribee. I watched a bit of that VFL game, and uh, uh, I thought he moved very, very well, number 24. He got Mark over his head. He gets in the right spot. Uh, good courage. Um, I don't reckon he's far off. So the boy O'Donnell, uh, he's come from nowhere, hasn't he? Like he? I mean, I think he was still thinking about playing cricket, like the old man was. I think the old man might have played 20 or 30 games at St Kilda, didn't he, in the 
eighties or something. Yeah, correct, summer, correct. Uh, footy that was, and played for Australia, obviously in cricket. Um, and there's a young bloke. What six? How big is he? Uh, young O'Donnell. He'd be six four, five, six four, maybe oh, six, six four. I'd have to be, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I, I haven't seen any of his footy, Paul. Matty, you may have seen a bit in the VFL, Paul, but obviously he's played three games only. And to be, you know, rushed, not rushed, but to be put put straight into that side, uh, he's doing something right, isn't he? He's an athlete, isn't he? And he, you know, he moves magnificently. You know, he's a he's a fantastic trainer, and um, you know, I guess he's just been really accelerated. So, you know, what an exciting thing for him to give him a bit of a taste of it. Um, and you know, if he if he is to go back and and, and return to Footscray, um, you know, he can ply that craft and take that experience with him and and keep on developing. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of him. I'm with you, Matty. And Paul, you're right about number 24. Buku Kamas. Buku Kamas. Yeah, he's not far off. Paul, he's not far off. And you're on the money there, mate. Trust me. He, he, he looked like he looked like a senior player in the make. He's actually looked fantastic. And the great yeah. thing about him, he's so versatile. You know, like he, he can play forward. Tough. He played forward as a junior. And I think he kicked 70 goals as, a, as an, an 18-year-old. Um and, um, and you know, he's obviously got, can ply some craft down back as well. And now he's back in the forward line. So it's just when is, will his opportunity arise? You know, that's the thing. Are you happy with the current three tall setup, Dougie? Because, you know, I, I guess you can't bring in a fourth tall. I wouldn't have thought. Uh, no, you know, we, no, I think I think we've got it pretty right. And Paul, you've seen a bit of the VFL. Is, where, where's Riley West out? Where's his career out? Is it at yeah, the Bulldogs? Good question. Good question, Dougie. Look, is that the I've Bulldogs, seen it. is it or not? I was yeah, I went and saw him play at Port Melbourne. I saw him yeah. on the weekend at Werribee. Um, look, he he's playing his trade. I think it, you know, like the young the, the list of players try and do, they're running their patterns, they're running their style of game. You know, they've given instructions, but he's working really hard. He I think he had 18 possessions on the weekend. He's given the ball out a fair bit. Uh he looks fit. He, you know, like, like a lot of those young blokes, I look a bit frustrated, I guess trying to break into the ones and, and trying to, you know, get their hands on the ball. But I don't know, Dougie, Maddie's a bit more optimistic around, around Westy. Maddie, what are your thoughts? Oh, look, I, I absolutely love Westy. I, I just think he's, he's super tenacious. Um, you know, he, he's just got a, a strong body. He's got just a footy brain. He's, um, his game awareness is exceptional. Um, you know, there's a, there's obviously a few elements that, that he's working on and um, I've, I've, I'm still really um confident and optimistic that once he breaks in, um, hopefully he can, he can, he can stay in there. Um, but, you know, it's a hard midfield to break into and, um, and even now a half forward flank um, is a tricky spot because you've got the likes of um, Waitman, who's, you know, who's just a, a smooth operator down there. And we've just seen the emergence of the magnificent Artie Jones, who's going to be a, a quickly becoming a fan favorite. How, Maddie, know, how do you get yeah. into that team? Matty, Paul, I, I hope I'm wrong here. I'm hoping I'm wrong here. I've got a gut feeling that he won't be a bulldog next year. Mm. Well, the, the I've, got is, gut feel, uh, I've got a gut feeling. I've got a gut feeling. And again, for us bulldog people, the son of the great Scotty West, I hope I'm wrong. I've just got this gut feeling that uh, lack of opportunities that he's had over the last probably year and two year or two. I, I, I'd be surprised he's going to stay a bulldog. How's that? And that's he, not. I don't know that, but Dr. the thing Sainer. is, you know, like you said, Matty, a, a while back he actually held that forward pocket role for a little while. He was almost established in the team for about six weeks, Matty, and mm. I think that Artie Jones taking that role and owning it has probably, uh, you know, made made Vandermeer and West, you know, Waitman, they, they, Waitman's Wait, playing well. Waitman's yeah. playing well. They don't. They're not optional for those positions anymore. For that position anymore. So. Hence why those two guys are still in the reserves. But yeah, it's a it's an interesting call you make, Dougie. I hope I'm wrong, Paul. I hope I'm wrong, Matty, for us Bulldog people, because yeah, you know, I'd love to see young Westy make it. And I hope I'm bloody wrong. I hope you're wrong as well, Doug. Hey, so, boys, here's an, here's another question. Wait, man. Matty, you made the point on Saturday night. He had a real impact near the end of that game where he, he made some very good decisions with the ball. He wasn't flying in the packs. He was on the ground where I think he should be. Uh, but he's persevering where he's not kicking his, you know, taking his speckies and kicking his goals. Where where do you feel like he's at at the moment with his development? Paul, I actually saw him a few weeks ago live against Port Adelaide. And I was surprised they played him. I, I wouldn't have played him. That's me. I wouldn't have played him, Waitman. I thought he was sensational <laughs> that night in the wet. I thought he may have kicked four goals or five goals. 
but the way he competed for the footy, he looked like a kid he hasn't missed a beat, like he hadn't missed one game. He hadn't played for bloody five or six, seven weeks. And it just showed me then that this kid, he's got more than just a, a forward pocket sneak goal kicker. He's he got a stamp of quality, quality about this kid, Waitman. I thought he's a bit more than just a kid that's going to try and take a specky every now and then and that. He, he played a package game, a full package game. I thought he was sensational in that game against Port Adelaide. Um, so I, I think the kid's got a is a is a. I think the kid's going to be a star if he keeps his head down, get the job done. Just keep the head down, keep doing what he does, competing. Um, I think young Waitman can be a real star of the Western Bulldogs down the track. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he his flatmate is Artie Jones, and they've both got oh, the same sort of yeah, they live together, and they've both got the same infectious <laughs> energy. They you know, yeah. and they, you know, as you've sort of described, they bring that tackling pressure as well. They've got a, a touch of class, but when when the ball is in the opposition's hands, they shut down space, they close it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's such an important role, I guess, now these days. You know, playing that pressure pressure forward role. Hey, Dougie, could you imagine living those two living together? You know, I've got dinner ready. Come and get dinner. Get every way, Joe. I'd poison his food on the Friday night. He gets, he won't be able to play the next day. He's going to take me spot. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in there. Oh, I can tell you, there must be so much energy. The walls must be reinforced to keep all that sort of, you know. Nah, fantastic, poison. boys, isn't it? Just fantastic. Dogs in, dogs are in good shape. I think the coach is going along pretty nicely. You know, after round two, everyone wanted to pot him, everyone wanted to bag him, get rid of him. As us three, we stuck thick. So we knew that when he's got his back to the wall, Bevo, that's when he's at his best. And he's coached very, very well the last six or seven weeks. And he's proved all those knockers, particularly the media, all those parasites, uh, proved them wrong. Well, look, I, I just absolutely love Bevo. And... Um... You know, unfortunately, the, the media drive this whole, we've lost a game, so therefore we need to find a fall guy. Let's let's attack somebody. And, um, you know, the broader picture is, you know, a, a season isn't made up of one or two games. It's actually, you know, building momentum and, um, and a game style and a culture. And Bevo just brings all of that. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to challenge Bevo, come at us here at inside the kennel and we'll uh, we, we'll we're happy to fight you back don't worry about that That's come it. out swinging cuz he will boys a couple more questions without notice uh ask me this one nordo nordo's great um he's been really good up forward i noticed that he doesn't lead a lot uh for the ball he takes a lot of his marks sort of in packs what's the reasoning? Would, would he be a better player if he was leading? Is that is that a, a something that he needs to work on, Matty Dougie? What, what are your feelings around that? I, I think he, with you, Paul, I, I think he's at his best when he's leading and, and out leading out to mark the footy. Now, is it the fact that young Jamara is playing in front of him? I don't know. Has young Jamara been playing up the ground a little bit where he's been more now restricted to, to stand his ground more back deep in the forward line where he's not that leading forward that he has been over the the last few years, uh, you guys might know more about that because I would think if Jamara's playing up in front of him, he's going to be restricted a bit in his leading. Is that fair? A bit like Waitman. I feel like uh, when things aren't going his way, he's still managing to get his hands on the ball and have an impact. What are your, what are your views about his development, Dougie? Paul, how, how old is he, Paul? Matty, how old is young Jamara now? Is he 20, is he 20, 21? 21. 21. Yeah. Ridiculously young. In the system, Dougie. how long now? Has he been in the system? Uh, this is his third year, I think. Third yeah, year. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I, I just reckon he, he he probably should be maybe. You're right. He had a good, didn't he, Paul? Probably four weeks ago, he kicked out four or five goals. Yeah. After he got a little bit of abuse from someone in the crowd and that sort of stuff, got him going. And uh, I just reckon now, three years, I reckon the kids should start probably playing a little bit more consistent. Um, and that comes with playing games, obviously, Paul, Matty, as we all know. Uh, I just reckon after three years, this boy now is starting to know the game, understand the game. And I just reckon he, he should be at a level now where he's producing a lot more consistent. Is that been a bit tough on him? Or has that been fair? You, you're, you're naturally tough, Dougie, and you have high expectations. I think there's no reason to uh, to back out of that, that style. You know, like we, we all want to see him play consistent footy. I, 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 um, I've been really impressed with him, you know, mm. and, and some of his off the ball stuff has, has been terrific. If, 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 um, our listeners go back and watch the last 10 minutes and, and, and access that. 
you'll see Jamara running up and down the ground and some of these involvements are terrific. So I know he's worked incredibly hard over the off season with his boxing and, and his tank. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's getting really close that he's just going to consistently uh, blow games apart. Boys, yep. uh, Caleb Daniels, is, you know, there was an interview, I think, uh, Tommy Libertori on the week on the ABC and just talked about Caleb Daniels because the back line seems to be a lot more cohesive, well, not a lot more cohesive, seems to be um, a little strength and they've allowed Caleb to move more forward into the centre, into the on ball and, and forward. What are your thoughts about uh, how he's travelling uh, at the moment? I'd sack him, Paul. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. that's a headline that's a headline he's a star there, mate he, he's a star kind of Daniel I'm a monster <laughs> fan of his his ability to read the play his ability to kick short or long change direction where he's running uh, he's a star the kid's a star and I know we've we used him a bit in the midfield uh, with Trelaw being injured at times um, I, I like him across half back he just sets things up he reads the play well uh, we give the ball to him, which is fantastic. Um, I'll say it again: Caleb Daniel is a star. Yeah, well, I agree with that, Matty. Um, now, Doug, before we let you go, we uh, we end this preview by asking you, what do you think the next four weeks hold yeah. in store for us? Now, I, I don't know if you've had a look at the picture, but we got the Crows this week down in Ballarat. Then we we go up north and we play the Suns. Then we, we take our nemesis, the Cats, who we always struggle with down here in Melbourne. And then we finish with Port back here in Melbourne. So those four games, what do you think? How are we going to go? We got Adelaide at Ballarat. Adelaide Correct. and Ballarat, Dougie. What do you got for us? Um, oh, gee whiz. They're going all right, aren't they? Mm. This is a tough game, boys. This is a real, real tough game for us. We, we, uh, we need to be right towards our best. Yep. We bring our best, we beat them. We bring less than our best. We might be in a real, a real arm wrestle. How's that? I, I, I think we can win, but I wouldn't be shocked if we get skittled. I just think Adelaide are going all right, boys. And they beat us there last time, Matty, I thought, was didn't yeah, they? Yeah, one point. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I, I think we can get them, Paul. I think we can get them, Paul, Matty, if we play at our best. But need to be at our best. Right. I think who we got, who got the next one? We got, who we got next? The That's Sun's up in Darwin, is it? Queensland, yep, in Queensland. We'll get them. Yep. I, I, like, I like them. Darcy McPherson, the son of Steve, has been outstanding. Darcy's been in great form for them across halfback. Um, I, I think I think we'll get them up there. So, okay. Dougie, we're going to beat the Crows, but we're going to be at our best. Suns, we've got yep. covered. Cats. Where's that out, Paul? Where's that out, Matty? Paul? Marvel. We'll get them. We'll get them. Got to be they're, at our they're, best. <laughs> they're injury prone at the moment. I think they had something like eight or nine out. Did I think they? they'll have a few back. They'll be strong, but, you know. We'll get them. Marvel we'll get them. As our slaughterhouse, though, Dougie, remember? It's our slaughterhouse. Yeah, Marvel. We'll get them at Marvel. We'll get the cats. All right. And mind you, um, you know, Trelaw will be back then. Um, you know, no, Danny will have the yeah. four games under his belt. We, you know, we, we're loading up. Um, yeah. We, we end off with... Port Power. We almost pit them on their home ground. We got them on our on our deck at the Marvel. Correct. We'll beat them, <laughs> Matty. I'm going to say, I reckon we're going to get three out of the four for sure. Yep. Which would be a very very good result for us, and we can beat Adelaide. Uh, but that's one. Of, that's a bit of a coin job that for me at Ballarat. Might get a wet track. Could yep. get a wet track up there, at Ballarat. Beautiful ground. Uh, the Ballarat footy ground there, North Ballarat football oval there. Uh, I reckon three out of the four boys, and uh, we can we can get we can get Adelaide to make it four. That'll put us in a good position, Dougie. And look, I agree. I, I'm probably feeling more confident than ever looking at the next four weeks, and I was certainly four weeks ago, or five weeks or so. I agree, Maddie. What are your feelings around that? Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. Um, three out of four would be a fantastic um, yep. result, I think. Um, but four out of four, certainly um, not out of the realms of possibility. Um, I'm backing us in for the four. Matty, Paul, if we win three out of four, we'll finish top four. Yeah, wow. There it is. Yep. That's, that's my feelings. If we win three yep. out of four and we snag four out of four, we finish top four. Make no mistake about that. Okay, and it gives wow. us a bit of a crack at it. Yeah. That's an important month, Dougie. Very important month. Big month, uh, Paul. Matty, this is a huge month of footy. Uh, this could set us finals up for the boys. Uh, and get a double chance, and it gives you a crack at the grand final. You want to know what? 
that grand final is wide open. It is very, it is, don't, don't, it? everyone's saying Collingwood this, Collingwood this. It is very wide open. Well, look, we're going to call you the Notre Dame of Braybrook now, Dougie. <laughs> Notre Dame, but we'll sit down here in five weeks' time or four weeks' time, and you'll have to make a count of your predictions, my friend. But by crikey, I hope you're right, <laughs> Maddie. What do you reckon? Bring it on. Four weeks from now, it's a date, and uh, if we're if we're sitting um, nine or ten wins after after round thirteen, um, Nostradamus, I'm going to come and give you a, a big big cuddle. That's for sure. <laughs> God bless us all. I reckon all. that's going to stick that Notre Dame as Dougie. I reckon you've got Dance and Dougie, Flash, Flash, Flash Dougie. Lightning. Oh, Paul, you're Notre on fire, Dame's Paul. Dougie. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Dougie Dougie Hawkins, Good on you, Paul. Thank Good you on you, Matty. Go the Doggie. See you, mate. Red in my heart, white in my veins, blue in my eyes.